On the morning news, info that you can use. It's time for nine at nine. All right, number nine. We talked with uh, filmmaker Mike Chelsnick on Thursday. Uh, you should go to uh, check out his Amazon movie, Hundreds of Beavers, at the Music Box on April 10th. You can also go to his site to see his other work. Here's the trailer for Lake Michigan Monster, which he produced and edited, and uh, he did the effects for it also. Here it is. And then the monster attacked your father and took him away. Took him away and killed him. Might as well avenge the old man's death. say sea monsters aren't real or for that matter lake monsters well you see our monster resides here yeah we know it's like michigan it's the name of the movie and this is my band of rowdy cutthroats dick nedge and sean shaughnessy sean shaughnessy this sounds like the work of someone who's a drunk Wow, this thing's actually pretty big. Monsters aren't small, Nedge. Except for centipedes. This is spectacular. Yeah. This monster has you in its grasp, and then it just lets you go. Terrifying, nevertheless. Next stop, Lighthouse Island. Do we have a boat? It's pronounced pontoon. I'm not sure that's right. What is going on? Yeah. <laughs> points for creativity. We had a guy there also. <laughs> mm -hmm. Also, like, the one that you took away yeah, from well, that whole yeah. thing. <laughs> the writer and director is Ryland Toos. What a film. It's like an 80s music video meets the Maltese Ooh. Falcon meets <laughs> heroin. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say LSD. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I That's love great, it. yeah. Wow. Not the heroin part. Right, the rest, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. good, right? Yeah. All right, number eight. Would you like to see the world record high dive? Oh yeah, I love that. Yes, we definitely do. The year is 1983. The location is SeaWorld in San Diego. The show is ABC's Wide World of Sports. Oh, that we show. need more of this. The it's... man way up there is Rick Charles. He was a high school and collegiate All-American oh, and a conference diving champion. Look wow. how high Are he is you at Ohio me? University. The height is so that height's 172 feet. Yeah. Since 1983, many divers have tried to break this record, but they all sustained injuries upon impact with the water and had to be rescued. So let's watch Rick in that this little speedo. Crazy. Meditating. What's it going to feel like? What do I have to do right off the top? Why not go for 174 feet? Arm down below. 175. Well, He's never done this before. He does not know what oh, to expect. He's mercy. in the air. He's in good shape. Very good. Oh, oh gosh. Right. He <laughs> hit well. Now, he could have he hurt himself. The dive was good. It was solid. He's a oh strong my God. He's never that is scary. Before. He does not know what to expect. He's in okay. the air. He's in good shape. Very mm. good. Uh, just right. the end is a little. Yeah. Now, he yeah. could have hurt himself. The was good. feet first. Yeah. I think that's the, the plan, yeah, that right? That was it, yeah. He definitely got knee pads on. Also, you don't see most divers with knee pads on. I want to know what they paid him to do that. Yeah, that's what Maybe it was just the glory it, of the it, record. Probably this is the old school days, right? Yeah, the right? glory of the sport, Larry. Oh, man. Thrill of victory. Yes. Right, nobody knew his name until we just ran it on Charles, TV yeah. just now. Oh, everybody knows and his that's name. That's just 173 feet. I'd like to think that one of our viewers could get to 175. We could do it live on the show here. We'll set up a pool in the side yard yeah. or we'll do it out on Lake Michigan. It's just three more feet. <laughs> it's a great idea. If you're one of our viewers, yeah. Maybe you're on your last leg anyways. Right. And if you'll you, sign a waiver. Yeah, just call <laughs> oh, at least a Maybe you jump on a SkyCam 9. Right. We'll get you up to 200 feet and wow. we'll yeah. shove you out and see if you live. I think we should have several meetings on this and, yeah. Yeah. and talk about Listen. the pros and, and cons. And let's not let any attorneys get involved because no. they no. kill all the fun. No. No. Well, if there are no takers, we can just do it for around town. Yeah. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That'd be worth watching, That'd be right? Donna. That's a good idea. <laughs> Uh, number seven, this is Kalandula Falls. It's 1,300 feet wide with a 328-foot drop, and it's one of the largest waterfalls in Africa. All right. For the people of Angola, it's considered the sacred waterfall. In the past, people would perform rituals to calm the gods and ask for health and prosperity. Fair enough. But to get there, you need to get down a steep, rocky trail to the bottom. The slippery trek to get to these spectacular views takes 30 minutes. Thanks to the London travel company called Ade Africa Travel for this cool video. It's beautiful. 
Oh, look at those two people over there. All right. All right, number six, how do you feel about tin to fish? Oh, We're talking about stuff like sardines, herring, oh. even tuna. Oh. These things are all huge now, and a lot of young people in their 20s are discovering them for the first time. According to Supermarket News, sales of sardines jumped a few years back, and they've stayed strong. Oh. Anyone on the sardine? Awful. You're on no, the sardine? No, not on that train not either. Big, sir. I'm not fine with the herring and the... Really? The tuna, as long as I like it pickled. Uh, yeah, but, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, sardines are a little, eh, a little fishy to me. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, a new study from the good folks at UIC finds one third of rideshare drivers have had a crash on the job. Their survey of 277 drivers was published in the Journal of Safety Research. The reasons why aren't surprising. Drivers say they were using a cell phone, driving while tired, or driving on unfamiliar roads. Researchers say services like Uber and Lyft are uniquely yeah. susceptible to mm. certain dangers because uh, the drivers have to use their cell phones to get information about new passengers. They're usually driving as a second job, which makes them more likely to be tired on the road. On top of that, drunks and jerks in the back seat ain't easy to deal with. Yeah, they're the worst. Yeah, that's not an easy oh, job. Easy. So frustrating, right? Yeah. They like drive. They're, they're the worst in the city. Infuriates me. They're not parking in parking spots. They're blocking the road. <laughs> sitting there the cats also did the same thing too prior to that, Paul. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. And they're driving like three miles an hour around. Oh, Paul. Infuriating. I'm fine if we got rid of all of them, to be honest with you. And how would people get around Let's go back to taxis. I'm fine with taxis. Oh, go back to taxis. I thought you were yeah. going to say, like, let's get horse and carriage. Yeah, like an 80 year old mom driving around. <laughs> no good. Number four, here's some little known rules about the beach. For example, it's illegal to dig holes in the sand at Myrtle Beach in South Carolina. If you dig a hole bigger than two feet, you must refill it before you leave or risk a big fine. It is illegal to sing in a swimsuit in the state of Florida. It's not enforced much, but you never know because it's Florida. And if you're ever in Miami, do not try selling oranges. If you're caught trying to do that, you could face 30 days in jail. Hmm. Why, I wonder. All right, number three, let's talk about the pink see-through Fantasia. It's a magnificent creature. Pink Fantasia is a type of sea cucumber, and it's a relatively new addition to the marine life family. It wasn't discovered until 2007 in the Western Pacific Ocean. And here's what we love about the Pink Fantasia. It's not afraid to show off. Check out its hearty digestive system. You can clearly see its mouth, its anus, and intestines. And just when you think you can't get better than that, hold on, it doesn't. Uh, Pink Fantasia also emits light when it's in danger and uses a special finger-like webbing to help it swim. Hmm. How about more, that? Yeah, a little more privacy maybe yeah. would work, though. We got anus into the newscast, yeah. which I wasn't I, counting yeah, wasn't, yeah, on a wasn't Friday. It, wasn't thinking we were going no, down I, that uh, route, but you know. We did it all week. I thought we were going to get it without it. No, we got to get it, yeah. Hi, I'm yeah. the for I'm us. your yeah. That was, that was special. Thank you. You're welcome. Number two, here's a quick story of Admiral Dodd. He was made famous by B.T. Barnum. He was born as Leo Kahn in 1859 in San Francisco. His mom was insane and his father went to jail. Ah. Barnum discovered Dodd and his two brothers, who were also people of smaller stature. He named others Major Adam and General Penn. He thought they were so handsome, he had to have them as part of his show. Dot toured with the circus for many years and settled down and had a family in the New York suburbs. And that is the story of oh, Admiral Dot. Nice. Number one, Matt Damon was on Stephen Colbert's show last week. He shared a fascinating story about his cat. So we adopted this cat in Costa Rica about 10 years ago. He was living by himself in the jungle. He was the coolest cat you've ever seen. I mean, he was, he was hunting. He had two giant holes in his side. He was fighting for his life every night. And we're staying at this Airbnb, and we start feeding the cat. And we were there for a month. And so by the end, we, we had to take the cat. We were like, this guy's going to die. Now he's relying on us. He, he moves into our house. I think he's, I had a little yard in LA. But he'll be great out there. He never went outside ever again. <laughs> Cut to the cat ends up with a brain, t a brain tumor. And that's OK. <laughs> he, we take him to the. You know, we get him radiation, we take him, you know, he's the toughest jungle cat. He's not going to, I'm not going to let a, a brain tumor take this cat out. Eventually, we, he's, he, we move to New York and the cat's lost a lot of weight and he's only walking in left circles. 
and I take him to the animal hospital here, and I meet the cat neurologist. <laughs> this is true, the dude's name is Chad. <laughs> <laughs> and Chad goes, look, you know, at a certain point, you have to have this conversation with your children because being part of a pet owner is, you know, part of doing that is, is you know, giving them their dignity, and this cat doesn't really have a quality of life anymore. And I said, I agree. Uh, I'm gonna have that conversation. I'm gonna bring him back in three weeks, and if he's not better. And Chad said, I could, I could load him up on steroids. <laughs> and I go, what do you mean? He goes, I mean, I could give him like, like a bunch of steroids. What? <laughs> and I go, are there long-term issues with that? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Massive long-term issues with that. But yeah. like, we can just see what happens. <laughs> That was two and a half years ago. Oh! Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now he's Jack. Now he's Jack. And I joke that he's like, he's like, he, he's like Arnold Schwarzenegger. He's like, good morning. He's like got muscles on muscles, you know what I mean? He looks great. So we adopted this cat in Costa Rica. Wow. wow. That is quite. Meow, meow, meow. That's a screenplay right there. Yeah. What's he doing? Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Wow, who's Jack? That was. Yeah, you're not expecting that story to go that yeah, direction. No, that was great. Good for All you. right, that's the nine and nine. Nine and nine.